seeing a study come out that shows that fasting doesn't work as well as caloric restriction, that hurts. That's like watching your favorite basketball team completely lose, even though they usually win, right? It hurts, but it doesn't make you abandon that team, right? We have to look at the big picture. The team has completely kicked tail the entire season and then they lost and it hurts. So when we look at data from studies, we take it with a grain of salt, but we look at the big picture. So this brand spanking new study that came out in June 2021 that was published in the journal Science Translational Medicine, clear as day showed that caloric restriction was better for fat loss and muscle sparing than alternate day fasting. And I'm going to go through that study. I'm gonna pick it apart, but not in a bad way, because this study was exceptionally well-crafted. It was a good study with great things that were looked at. But of course, like any study, there are flaws, but more than the flaws, we have to look at it in its context, which people aren't doing when they're talking about this. They're so quick to take it to the bank, they're not looking at the bodies of evidence that show different things so that we can actually analyze. I'm not being a sore loser. I understand that sometimes fasting doesn't work. Sometimes it does. It worked well for me. I lost over 100 pounds with it. So yes, I am a walking testimony for it. And yes, I am proud and passionate about it. And that is why I'm here standing in front of you today but we still need to look at data because it matters. So let's break it down. And after this video, today's sponsor is a company called 8Sleep. If you're into fasting, you're probably into data and metrics. 8Sleep is a mattress topper that not only has cooling abilities, that it has like this smart sensor that allows it to kind of sense when it needs to regulate temperature to help make you sleep better, but it also monitors your heart rate variability, measures your respiration rate, like how much you're actually breathing per minute, it measures your heart rate, and then it gives you data when you wake up in the morning so that you can analyze how you slept, time slept, wake up consistency, how long it takes me to fall asleep. This is my sleep stages, 20% REM sleep, 60% light sleep, how much you tossed and turned, but more so like how recovered you are, and just gives you insights into your sleep, which are really fascinating. So I put a link down below for you to check them out, because I know people that are into fasting are usually into kind of nerdy stuff like that. It is so worth it to get the mattress topper, like absolutely. So check them out. There's a link down below that'll save you a couple of bucks as well. That way you can try them out. They are a supporter of this channel, and I love them for that. They are awesome. But more importantly, I love what they provide in the way of data. So check them out down below. All right, so this study compared alternate day fasting to caloric restriction. And it was a randomized control study, which is like the cream of the crops, the best that you can get, okay? What they did is they had three groups. One group did regular caloric restriction at 75% of their normal calories. Another group did alternate day fasting, 150% of their normal calories one day, 0% the next day. So equal calories to the 75% caloric reduction group because one group is eating 75% every day, the other group is eating 150% one day, zero the next. Then there was a third outlier group that was alternate day fasting with 200% calories one day and zero calories the next day. So with a study like this, it's small, 36 people. So statistical error, yeah, we take that into consideration. But there's a lot of small studies that give us great insight. So let's not stop it there. That's still a good study. They also looked at tremendous things. It was very well crafted. They controlled alcohol, they controlled caffeine, they controlled smoking. They also looked at plasma leptin levels. They looked at insulin, they looked at glucose. They looked at the things that matter. It was a good study, admittedly, absolutely. But when we start looking at the outcome, it's a little disconcerting. You see, it was a short study. So realism factor number one, I'm gonna give you three realism factors that we have to look at. This study was only three weeks that is not an accurate representation of doing a diet. Not many people need to just diet for three weeks, right? When I lost 100 pounds, it took me over a year. Okay, so three weeks is not an accurate representation, especially when you're looking at like big picture stuff. And I have more studies to kind of follow up in just a minute. The other realism factor, they only looked at lean people. There were no obese or overweight subjects. It was only lean people with a BMI between 20 and 25. So. Like, why were they looking at lean people? Lean people respond to fasting totally different. I recommend fasting for lean people as a maintenance mechanism, not as a necessarily a more fat loss mechanism. So for overweight people, it's a different ball game. The realism factor number three, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is that there was no difference in the metabolic markers between the two groups. So cutting to the chase, okay, when you look at the outcome of this study, the group that was doing caloric restriction lost more weight than the alternate day fasting group and they lost more fat, okay? Implying and showing that the alternate day fasting group didn't lose as much fat but actually lost quite a bit of muscle. It was not a good outcome. It didn't look good. 
Okay, but the metabolic markers were the same. There was no difference, no differences in leptin and glucose and all this, showing that the fundamental baseline of like kind of what happened here, both were good. So we don't need to look at the health biomarkers so much because they both worked well. Caloric restriction does work well for improving biomarkers, as does fasting. Great, good news, we're on the even field there. But what's going on with the muscle thing here? Well, unfortunately, that's just how this study played out. In a three week period of time, people that did alternate day fasting lost more muscle, but they were also lean already. So then you're saying, well, Thomas, you have a good amount of muscle and you're pretty lean. How does alternate day fasting work for you? Well, when you look at the research, it makes some sense. We can't just look at one study. Let's look at a study that was published in the journal Obesity. So this study found that in the first eight weeks of alternate day fasting, there was a 3.2% loss in muscle mass. Oh shoot, we are two for two right now, right? In the first eight weeks. But between weeks eight and 32, muscle mass restored back to baseline. Meaning from week eight to 32, they were building muscle back. Why? Because at first, alternate day fasting is aggressive and you're losing a little bit of everything as your body shocks and then your body acclimates and it turns into this much better situation. Well, this same study found when they compared to caloric restriction that caloric restriction only allowed fat loss for the first eight weeks. Between weeks eight and 32, fat loss plateaued. There was no more fat loss. So interesting. So now it makes sense. When we look at a study that is a shorter study, caloric restriction is more favorable, more fat loss, less muscle wasting. But when you actually look at the long term, you see, ah, as a lifestyle, alternate day fasting might work better. I will tell you one thing. I do not want to sit there and count leaves of spinach all the live long day. I would much rather do alternate day fasting where I can eat ad libitum, eat what I want, and then fast the next day. It's much better for my lifestyle and how my brain works. You might be different. You might like enjoying counting grains of rice. That's cool. That's your call. But this obesity journal study also concluded that there were just flat out less plateaus and that alternate day fasting may be a more sustainable option. Cool. Well, let's look at some other data. If you look at more studies, like a study that was published in the journal JAMA and a study that was published in the journal Clinical Medicine, well, this found that when they compared alternate day fasting to caloric restriction, there was no difference between the two. They both had a positive outcome. Okay, cool. Again, that's not saying one is better than the other. It comes down to what fits your lifestyle better. What gets you more benefit? There's benefits with each, of course. And they're both great for longevity. They're both great for telomere. All that stuff, the woo-woo witch doctor stuff I talk about, caloric restriction gets you there too. I just think that fasting is more attainable for people that are wired like me. That's just how it rolls. But then a really cool study that was published in Complementary Therapies Medicine, which was a larger study that took a look at alternate day fasting versus caloric restriction with 69 people, almost double the amount of this science translational medicine study that just came out, really found some very interesting stuff that was much more positive towards ADF. So this was eight weeks long, still relatively short. But after just eight weeks of alternate day fasting versus caloric restriction, there was an improvement in weight, there's an improvement in insulin, an improvement in glucose, and an improvement in waist circumference with ADF, more so than caloric restriction. A bigger improvement in waist circumference, that is one of the biggest factors that you should be paying attention to because that factors in visceral fat. Visceral fat is something we all agree on that it is not exactly what we want. So it gives you a pot belly, but it is also very, very immunologically active and is associated with a lot of different instances of mortality. It's not a good thing. So we have that going for us. That journal, when it's actually looking at overweight people, okay, ADF is definitely favorable. Then lastly, a study that was published in the journal Obesity that looked at ADF over the course of 12 months versus caloric restriction, and they found that alternate day fasting was better for improving insulin resistance. So long term, maybe if you're really trying to control metabolic markers and trying to control your glucose metabolism and trying to control insulin sensitivity, like resistance balance a little bit more, ADF might work. Why? Because you're giving yourself a break every now and then and allows those things to reset. Does it mean the caloric restriction is bad? No, it's just not going to be as sustainable to count calories forever. Maybe you can do it while you're young and spry and you're in the fitness industry and you want to just like pay attention and you want to have a certain six pack and look a certain way. But when life actually hits you, you have kids, you have a life, you actually want to do things, you realize that a lifestyle that allows you to just kind of eat and then fast, eat and then fast, it might just work better because you're not stressing about it as much. There's no one way that's good, bad, or ugly. What works for you? And this study, all it did is illuminate that even more so. I still love my fasting, and I'm gonna stand behind that. I'll see you tomorrow.